In this video, we're going to be learning about ROS actions. We've already seen how ROS services give us a way for triggering a task in another node and getting a result back. And this works great for simple, short tasks. But some tasks take a long time to complete, and you may want partial results as the task goes. For those purposes, we have ROS actions. Actions follow a similar structure to services, where we have one server connected to many clients. The differences come when we inspect how those clients interact with the server. When an action client connects to an action server, it will send across a goal for the server to complete. The server then starts working on the goal and will send back several feedback messages with partial results about its progress towards that goal. Eventually, when the task is finished, the server will send back a final result message. This will let the client know the output of the task. This could be the results of some calculation or a success flag that tells the client whether or not the server was able to finish the task. At any point in this middle section, while the task is being done, the client can send a cancel command or a preempt command. A cancel command will tell the action server to stop trying to work on that goal, and a preempt command will give the action server a new goal to replace it with. A common use for actions in ROS are for moving robots. You can have an action that tells the robot to move to a specific location. So the client will send a location as its goal, and the action server will start driving the robot towards that location, giving feedback messages periodically with perhaps the robot's current location or how far away it is from the goal. When the robot reaches the final goal position, the server can send a result message, letting the client know that the robot reached the goal. If the server determines the robot can't reach that goal, the server might send back a result message saying that the goal was unreachable. And of course, at any time, the client could cancel that goal, telling the action server to stop driving the robot or preempt that goal with a new goal when the destination the robot needs to move to has changed. Let's take a look at a specific action defined in the ActionLib tutorials package and write a client to call that action from C++. To get started, let's take a look at the action we're going to call. We can do this by running ROS CD ActionLib tutorials and then going into the action directory and taking a look at the file fibonacci.action. This is an action file, and just like a service file, it defines the structure of the messages used when running the action. Each section is split up with a triple dash line. The first section is our goal. This is the input the client has to give when calling the action. The second section is the result. This is the final result message that will be sent back from the server to the client. The last section is the feedback message. These are the messages the server will send back to the client while it's working on the task. Here we can see in order to call the Fibonacci action, we need to give it one number the length of the sequence that we want. The feedback message that it sends back to us will include the sequence that it's calculated so far, and the final result message will include the full sequence that we requested. Now that we know the structure of the action we're going to be using, let's jump into our RJ training workspace and write a C++ node that calls this action. In our RJ training package, I'm going to create a new file in the source directory called Fibonacci client. In this file, let's start just by creating a basic ROS node. To use the Fibonacci action we were just looking at, we need to include the header file from the ActionLib tutorials package. And to use the simple action client type provided by ActionLib, we need to include its header as well. Now in the body of our main method, we can declare a new instance of that simple action client type, templated on the Fibonacci action type. In the constructor, we need to give the name of the action we're calling, in this case, Fibonacci, and a Boolean flag which we'll set to true. When this argument is set to true, the client will set up its own background threads for handling the action communication. If we set this to false, we would have to handle some of that threading ourselves. The first thing we need to do with any action client once we've created it is wait for the action server to become available. We can do this by calling client.waitForServer. Now we need to create the goal that we're going to send to the server. So let's declare a new ActionLib Tutorials Fibonacci goal. We'll set the order member to 20, and we'll send that goal to the server by calling client.sendGoalGoal. For now, we just want to wait for the action server to finish doing its calculations and send us back a result. So we'll call client.waitForResult. We can give waitForResult a duration 
after which it will time out if the action hasn't finished yet. In this case, we'll give it a duration of 30 seconds. And wait for result will return a bool that tells us whether the action finished before the timeout. So now we can check. If the action finished, we can do some result. Otherwise, we'll print out and let the user know that it timed out. Now in the body of our finished branch, let's grab the sequence from the result that the client got. And then we can print out the sequence using cout. So here I'm calling client.getResult to get a pointer to the result message that our client received from the action when the action was finished. From that result pointer, we're going to grab the sequence member that we saw in the action file and store a constant reference to it in this sequence variable. Then we're going to start printing output by first printing out the word result and then looping through each number in our sequence and printing out that number followed by a space. Once we printed out the whole sequence, we'll send an endline character to finish the line of output. With that code finished, we can save and close this document. We can open up our build file cmakelist.txt and add a new executable for our Fibonacci client. Now we're using headers from two new packages, actionlib and actionlib tutorials, so we need to declare those as dependencies at the top. That's all the changes to our CMakeList file. So we can close this and open up our package manifest, package.xml, and add those two new dependencies to this file as well. So I've added build dependent exec depend tags for each of our new dependencies, actionlib and actionlib tutorials. With those changes made, we can save and close the package.xml file. Now we can go back up into our catkin workspace folder and run catkin build to build our new node. Once that build finishes, we're ready to test our new action client. Let's start by running the action server from the actionlib tutorials. We can do this by running ross run actionlib tutorials Fibonacci server. That will just sit there waiting for a new client to start up. So now create a new tab and we can run our new client by running ross run RJ training Fibonacci client. Our server will print out that it got a new task to execute with the order of 20. Eventually it will print out finished and our client will print out the final result that it got. So there we go, we see it that it succeeded. And if we go back over to our client, we can see that our client got the result with the first 20 numbers in the Fibonacci sequence. So that's it for this video. You've been introduced to what actions are and how to work with them in ROS.